Members of Congress, I now have the high privilege and distinct honor of presenting to you His Excellency Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, Senator Ben Cardin, Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, Senators, Members of Congress, Distinguished Guests. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving me the profound honor of addressing this great citadel of democracy for the fourth time. We meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. It's a clash between those who glorify death and those who sanctify life. For the forces of civilization to triumph, America and Israel must stand together. Because, because when we stand together, Something very simple happens. We win, they lose. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like December 7th, 1941, and September 11th, 2001, October 7th is a day that will forever live in infamy. It was the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah. It began as a perfect day, not a cloud in the sky. Thousands of young Israelis were celebrating at an outdoor music festival. And suddenly, at 6.29 a.m., as children were still sleeping soundly in their beds in the towns in Kibbutzim next to Gaza, suddenly, heaven turned into hell. 3,000 Hamas terrorists stormed into Israel. They butchered 1,200 people from 41 countries, including 39 Americans. Proportionately, compared to our population size, that's like 29 11s in one day. And these monsters, they raped women, they beheaded men, they burned babies alive. They killed parents in front of their children and children in front of their parents. They dragged 255 people, both living and dead, into the dark dungeons of Gaza. Israel has already brought home 135 of these hostages, including seven who were freed in daring rescue operations.
One of those freed hostages, Noor Gamani, is here in the gallery, sitting near my wife, Sarah. On the morning... On the morning of October 7th, the entire world saw Noah's look of desperation as she was violently abducted to Gaza on the back of a motorcycle. I met Noah's mother, Leora, a few months ago. She was dying of cancer. She said to me, Prime Minister, I have one final wish. I wish to hug my daughter, Noah, one last time before I die. Two months ago, I authorized a breathtaking commando rescue operation. Our special forces, including a heroic officer named Arnon Zmora, who fell in this battle, rescued Noah and three other hostages. I think it's one of the most moving things. When Noah was reunited with her mother, Leora, and her mother's last wish came true. Noah, we're so thrilled to have you with us today. Thank you. I thank President Biden for his heartfelt support for Israel. After the savage attack on October 7th, he rightly called Hamas sheer evil. He dispatched two aircraft carriers to the Middle East to deter a wider war. And he came to Israel to stand with us during our darkest hour, a visit that will never be forgotten. <laughs> President Biden and I have known each other for over 40 years. I want to thank him for half a century of friendship to Israel and for being, as he says, a proud Zionist. Actually, he says, a proud Irish-American Zionist. <laughs> My friends, for more than nine months, Israel's soldiers have shown boundless courage. With us today, With us today is Lieutenant Avichail Ruven. <laughs> Avichail is an officer in the Israeli paratroopers. His family immigrated to Israel from Ethiopia. In the early hours of October 7th, Avichail heard the news of Hamas's bloody rampage. He put on his uniform, grabbed his rifle, but he didn't have a car. So he ran eight miles to the front lines of Gaza to defend his people. You hear that right? He ran eight miles, came to the front lines, killed many terrorists, and saved many, many lives. Abichal, we all honor your remarkable heroism. Another Israeli is with us here today, and he's standing.
Like Ashraf, the Muslim soldiers of the IDF fought alongside their Jewish, Druze, Christian, and other comrades in arms with tremendous bravery. My friends, these are the soldiers of Israel, unbowed, undaunted, unafraid. As the Bible says, Am Kelavi Yakum. They shall rise like lions. They have risen like lions. The lions of Judah, the lions of Israel. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the men and women of the IDF come from every corner of Israeli society. Every ethnicity, every color, every creed, left and right, religious and secular, all are imbued with the indomitable spirit of the Maccabees, the legendary Jewish warriors of antiquity. My friends, defeating our brutal enemies requires both courage and clarity. Clarity begins by knowing the difference between good and evil. Yet incredibly, many anti-Israel protesters, many choose to stand with evil. They stand with Hamas. They stand with rapists and murderers. They stand with people who came into the kibbutzim, into a home. The parents hid the children, the two babies, in the attic, in a secret attic. They murdered the families. The parents, they find the secret latch to the hidden attic, and then they murder the babies. These protesters stand with them. They should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> they refuse to make the simple distinction between those who target terrorists and those who target civilians, between the democratic state of Israel and the terrorist thugs of Hamas. We recently learned from the National Security Director, Director of, U.S. Director of National Intelligence, that Iran is funding and promoting anti-Israel protests in America. They want to disrupt America. So these protesters burn American flags even on the 4th of July. And I wish to salute the fraternity brothers at the University of North Carolina who protected the American flag, protected the American flag against these anti-Israel protesters. For all we know, Iran is funding the anti-Israel protests that are going on right now outside this building. Not that many, but they're there and throughout the city. Well, I have a message for these protesters. When the tyrants of Tehran, who hang gays from cranes and murder women for not covering their hair, are praising, promoting, and funding you, you have officially become Iran's useful idiots. Some of these protesters, that's amazing, 
absolutely amazing. Some of these protesters hold up signs proclaiming gays for Gaza. They might as well hold up signs saying chickens for KFC. <laughs> Working together, I'm confident that our two nations will vanquish the tyrants and terrorists who threaten us both. As Israel's Prime Minister, I promise you this. No matter how long it takes, no, how, no matter how difficult the road ahead, Israel will not relent. Israel will not bend. We will defend our land. We will defend our people. We will fight until we achieve victory. Victory over liberty, rather victory of liberty over tyranny, victory of life over death, victory of good over evil. That's our solemn commitment. Through thick and thin, in good times and in bad, Israel will always be your loyal friend and your steadfast partner. On behalf of the people of Israel, I came here today to say thank you, America. Thank you for your support and solidarity. Thank you for standing in Israel, with Israel, in our hour of need. Together, Together, we shall defend our common civilization. Together, we shall secure a brilliant future for both our nations. May God bless Israel, may God bless America, and may God bless the great alliance between Israel and America forever.